Hi, and welcome to music teacher tip and trick number eight. I'm glad you can join me. So today's tip is all about engagement. Um, in the Activate the Brain Engaged Learning Strategies That Work course that I have available, I share what's called a recipe for the engaged brain. Now this recipe is from a book called Captivate activate and invigorate the student's brain and I will share a link to that in the description of this video so you can check that book out if you want. Um, but in the book they talk about this recipe for an engaged brain and the first thing that a teacher should do is to prime the brain, get it ready for learning and then sprinkle in some of that novelty, continue to stir it up, insert relevance and then you want to blend together with content often. Pour into the big picture and mix some more. Marinate and stir once more. And check often for doneness. And then of course stir as needed. So that's your basic recipe for an engaged brain. Now priming the brain, this is the cognitive process where the mind brings forth prior knowledge in order to bridge it in the upcoming new learning. What a student already knows is the strongest predictors of how well they will process or assimilate the new information that you're teaching. When the prior knowledge is activated, students are more successful in encoding and retention and recalling. And then when we sprinkle in the novelty, these are things like games and activities, engaging them right when they walk in that door. And then you want, of course, to insert that relevance. This is the relationship between you and the student and why are they even learning this stuff? What makes it relevant? The brain actually craves relevancy. A good quote to think about is what the brain thinks about, it remembers. So. Thinking leads to remembering, and relevant builders are super important. Some examples of relevant builders would be asking essential questions. Questions are important. They lead students to understand for themselves and what they want them to learn. Why do I need to know this? Um, ask questions so they can figure out why they need to know things. Um, engaging scenarios or game-like activities are great relevant builders. So and the example was knocking on the door before they opened the door and came in for their lesson. You could do this before a class or a private lesson. It doesn't matter what you teach or how you teach or where you teach. These are great ways to engage students right before they walk into the door, right at the, as they walk in the door. So I created a fun little poem to get them started with that. So the poem says, a mystery rhythm is waiting for you before you open the door. If not correctly with a steady beat, something special will be in store. Practice the rhythm inside your head first. Get ready and have no doubt. You can do it. I know you can. Now knock the rhythm out. And the great thing about this, if you don't own it and are interested in it, I include 21 different rhythm patterns to choose from. The rhythm patterns I included are quarter note, has quarter notes, rests, eighth notes, sixteenths, triplets, dotted quarters. So there's quite a mix of different levels. So if you have students that um, need some more, a little bit more advanced rhythms, um, there's that. And then if you need some more simple rhythms, there are all the rhythms included and have at least eighth notes in them because um, that helps a little bit, give a little bit more um, engaging rhythms to knock. And then what about when they leave? A fun exit activity is have students transcribe a rhythm for you before they leave. And so also included is an exit slip that you can use for that purpose. So another thing that I share in the Activate the Brain course that I have available is there are three types of engagement that you could think about. So we have behavioral engagement. This is the student is following the rules, um, any instructions that, the, that you're giving them this is what they're supposed to be doing. And this is, you know, usually an engagement that most teachers think about 
because that's what we do. We teach, they, they learn, they follow the rules, they follow the instruction that you're giving them. But then we have the emotional engagement. This is when the student is totally vested in the activity or the lesson that you're giving them. They are connected to their learning, they're excited, they look forward to their lessons, they look forward to music um, activities and, and the lessons that you're providing. And sometimes this is the overlooked engagement, but I think with music teachers, we do think of, of this emotional engagement as well because music is emotional. Um, and so I think we kind of are pretty good about including that kind of engagement. And then we have the cognitive engagement. This is what the student's thinking about in that particular moment. This is also more hands-on and minds-on. And this um, type of engagement will depend on a specific strategy task that you have it going on or an activity that you have it going on. So your goal should be to have all three types of engagement. You want the behavioral, you want the emotional, and you want the cognitive. So something like an entrance or exit activity actually covers all three of these engagements. And it's something that um, engages them. Like I said, right before they walk in the door, they're instantly intrigued and like, that was fun. And um, their mind is open to what else you might have in store. So it's kind of like that surprise factor or what you might call a hook. Um, they're ready um, for it because of that. Um, they're hooked in and they're ready to learn. And then again, before they leave, you just kind of make sure that they're maybe understanding something um, that you want them, you know, that they've been learning. And an exit question can be, an, again, another rhythm, or it could be a, a question based on what you had them learning that day. So entrance and exit questions are a wonderful engagement tool to keep your students more engaged in their lessons and in their learning. I hope you enjoyed this teaching tip today, and I will see you next time. Happy teaching. Bye.